So, um, we started to get into off of Quentin and Mary, and moving through, we started to get into Shihonage, because it's the other famous technique where you have to go through and underneath your arm. One thing a lot of people were having trouble with is that when we do the hot tub, we, we go here, we go here, and we step through, and it's all beautiful, and it, he didn't move. But when you're in Rondori, that doesn't happen. In Rondori, if I start doing this and going here, he's probably going to move that hand and give me trouble. And everybody, this is what I was saying, it, it, you don't go to a place. What you do is you constantly adjust so that as this moves out, I'm keeping it stretched out. And as I move towards this hand, I'm just being patient enough to go wherever the hand is when I get there. I don't know where it's going to be. I just know that if I follow this over here and I just start going into it and going into it and going into it, eventually I'll get there. But if I decide that I'm going to take this and I'm going to go like that, he's going to wipe me out. So you have to be patient here. Uh, min is uh, how they call that. And here, 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 and let it go. The other thing is that people tend to, especially at the beginning, they'll go over here and then they'll try to throw at an angle, which is really good for Nage Waza because he's got to keep his elbow from breaking. But the natural place for a Shiho Nage is going to be through his small of his back that place. That's, that's actually the natural. So a lot of times you have to turn more than 180 degrees. If we start here, now we're 90, now we're here. Oh well, that's more, that's what, 270? Because he turned. He turned. A lot of times when you do things like this, here, here. Now I'm orthogonal to him. I've got him out of center, I'm on center. And you get to do that really pretty nice, easy movement. Um, so, Brian's taller than I am, he's got longer arms. So I got plenty of room here. I actually probably cannot stretch him straight up because I don't reach that high. What I can do is I can keep him off of his center. And as you see, I've got him stretched out here at a height that's comfortable to me. It's my head height. So, um, I've got some students that are about five feet tall. And so I try to duplicate their short arms here, this way. So if you're really short, that's that's probably easy. If I'm really short, if you need to do this. Where is that going to go? Okay. Yeah, you mentioned these. That there's not usually that much variability. So, okay. Um, we were talking about the dissolving wrist lock. So we got Shihonage now. So he's going to take this Shihonage. Well, we know Shihonage, that can break out in different ways. That's kind of like the first couple of things we did with Kota Hineri. So here I can do this. What I did was I pulled my hand in here and I rolled it. Let me show you that move of Kota so this is something that I actually learned in this dojo from Eric Pearson. I don't know if he intended that lesson, but something he did um, opened up something in my head. So let's take a look at Kutagash, because that's straight, that's similar. So right here, um, in Kutagashi, we're taught in Tomiki to keep unbendable arm, right? We apply power this way. Yes. Very nice. Keeps him off of us so that right here, he could probably punch me. Right here, not so much. So this is, this is good. Um, however, it tends to make us forget that we have elbows. So if he starts to cut the guy up here, and I, he's pushing this way. What's that direction, my elbow? I just let my elbow loose. It dissolves. And so thank you, Eric, because I didn't remember that I had elbows for about 20 years. <laughs> so I was like, hmm, what do I do with this? Okay, pull. Well, that's how we're supposed to pull, right? So Carl said something interesting once. He, he said that in this position, 
you can't push with the back of your hand. That's really weak. But I can pull like crazy. So, <laughs> obviously, that's one way to do it. When you pull, this means you curl into your body. And you obviously have another hand. And this was, that's a prime. Everybody should know this. That if they're taking put together, if I just pull that in and lock it onto my body, then, well, they're not going to be twisted. Now, I do try to go ahead and twist it from here because, well, let me say, I don't twist the wrist. If you lock that on your body here, I'm not twisting his wrist right here. I'm actually, I don't know if you felt that. It went, I was pushing into this segment. So, right here, when I do cut to gash, I lock the wrist. I use that to lock the elbow. Now you can see the shoulder starting to go. Now it's got him in the uh, hip and his knees and ankles. And it's not a painful process. Um, so you ought to practice this, by the way. This idea of into the lock and roll. When you feel this lock, use that lock to find the next joint. Use that joint to find that joint. Use that joint to find the next one. Run it down the hips. Brian, is there any pain on that? A little just a little. Yeah. Just not, just, not, not, not just right. It's just it, it's not, you know, yeah. cranking on this. If you can isolate power to the joint, but I really don't want the joint. I really want I really want his butt on the ground. So I'm gonna throw his butt. So here we got this guy, we're doing this nice style put to gash. When I say nice, I mean it's effective because it controls the body. And you can just let your wrist dissolve. You see how this hand can come in underneath here. And now he's got a torque and a twist on his hands. And it all goes away. So that's one idea. Let's take it in. We've got about 20 minutes. So there's about three or four different ways to dissolve this. You're doing cut to gash. So if I'm at the beginning of the technique, I can just turn around here. And now I'm in a place to push. So he comes in to do this. Just push out of it. Now the problem is I have to catch this really early to get my body around. That takes a little time. So if he's catching, oh, right here I I'm gonna have a hard time getting my body around this. This is when I might dissolve that elbow and just let the power come out. So we got pull into the chest. That's nice. We've got pushing on first contact. We've got dissolving the elbow and you got another hand. So use your imagination. Um, where you can cut through and do one of these. Why not? So, um, what else is there with cook cash? Um, as he starts to do this, I can take this up. Okay, he lifted. Really, a lot of times it depends on what they're doing. He took the, see how this is going up? Say, so, oh, great, geez, we want to go up with that? So the wrist, what, wrist lock went away. He quit chasing this wrist lock because he pushed it out of his own grip out of his own length, and he's got long arms. See, I shouldn't be able to do that. Um, and one last one is when this happens, you could just take your elbow and shove it right through. I think I got that one from JW. So anyway, let's uh, play with these, look at Cut to Gaiash, and try to feel these different ways of just allowing the technique to dissolve, early timing, middle, late, and depending on the direction of power that's being put in. Right? Thank you. <laughs>